Let's have some fun with public domain artwork. There's a site that I'm on here called wikiart.org. It's a free website and they advertise themselves as a visual art encyclopedia. So this is really a two-part video. First part, I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough of this site and just how to navigate it. There's tons to see and do. And in the second part of the video, I'll also be talking about how you can use artwork like this to sell on print on demand. So let's jump in. Okay, first things first, there's a search bar at the top. So if you wanted to search for a specific artist, you could. So for example, I'll just type in Monet, I'll hit search. You can see there's a whole bunch of search results that come back, plus the actual artist. There's an advanced search option, and then there's a whole bunch of artwork that comes back. So that's pretty easy if you're not into navigating menus and things like that. The second thing you can check out is the artwork of the day and it's right at the top and when you click on artwork details here you'll see a little bit better representation of the artwork. There's an article here, there's other famous artworks down at the bottom and then you can see here and this is, I really like this, you can see if it's public domain or not and typically if it's old like this is 1779 like older than 100 years it'll come up as public domain and that's really nice too. So if I click on this, I'll get a higher resolution scan and I can scroll in on it and go to the bottom, you can go to the top. It's over on the right hand side. So if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see I can zoom in or out. I can also maximize the view as well. It's a really nice feature. Now, if you want to download the image, then what you can do is you can click on this view all sizes. It's located down at the bottom. And when I click on view all sizes, you'll see the different sizes of artwork that come up. You can see here it's been digitally retouched as well. So if I click on the largest size that's digitally retouched, it now pops open and I can right click and I can save the image. I could set it as a background. I could email it. It basically just becomes an image file. It's actually a JPEG file. One thing that's kind of weird about this page is the artwork of the day. There's actually more than one. So I'm just going to click the refresh button here a couple times and you can see the artwork of the day continues to like change. It's kind of strange because you'd think they'd have like one piece of art every day. But anyway, you can just hit the refresh button and you can just cycle through and you can see all the different ways that they are showcasing artwork, which is kind of cool. And there's one more feature that I really like. And as I scroll on down, I'll see that there's a featured little section here and I can click on either the name of the artist or the actual piece of artwork. And then there's also a high resolution section as well. And I really like that because if you're using high resolution artwork, you have an option here. So here's just an example, this portrait of Vincenzo. I'm going to click on that and we can see here it's public domain. I'll view all sizes and we can see here that the largest size, it's actually quite a large file size. And when it opens up, it's actually quite a high resolution picture here. When I click on it with the little magnifying glass, we can see all the sorts of little oil painting imperfections which make this a masterpiece. Okay, so the big question becomes, how do you use these older paintings for print on demand? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into the high resolution section and I'm gonna find something here and I'm gonna try to use that for print on demand. So I've got one of 20 out of 600. I'm gonna load in some more. I'm gonna keep scrolling on down and I'm gonna find something that I think would look great on print on demand. So here's an example, this poster for Fromm's calendar. I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna first of all check that it's public domain, and it is, and then from here, I'm going to click view all sizes, and I can see there's the largest file size. I'm gonna click on that. And as it loads in, I can see it's absolutely gigantic, beautiful, high quality poster. And so I can just right click it and save it. So I've got my image. So this is the one I'm going to be using to kind of look at how I can use this for print on demand. And there's really two ways that you can use an image like this for print on demand. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop. You could use Affinity Photo, any graphic software, it doesn't really matter. And really the first method is to use the image as an original image without changing it significantly. In other words, the reason the people are buying this sticker or t-shirt is because they like the original image. Now I would not recommend uploading just this poster as is. And the reason for that is because it's public domain, 800 other people could have done that as well. And if you're on Redbubble and you see the exact same poster, someone somewhere could initiate a copyright strike. Yes, it's public domain, but Redbubble doesn't necessarily know or care, and their robots are gonna detect there's a duplicate, and they're just gonna initiate the strike on the poor sap that's uploaded its second, third, 10th, 20th time. So what I would recommend instead is that you somehow clean up or change this image. So there's a few things you can do. For example, I'm just gonna rasterize this layer here. The one thing I can do is I can remove the outline. There's this tiny 
gray outline. I could remove that and I can then remove the entire gray. There's also gray down at the bottom. I could remove that as well. So here I could use the background eraser tool and then I could go in here and I could paint away the gray. So that's just an example. Now I could upload this. Now I'm going to remove the white, but I could upload that now to a t-shirt and I could be confident that it's not the exact same as someone else. I could also remove the actual orange background as well. I could go in here and paint that out. I just change my tolerance to get rid of it or I could just use my magic eraser tool and I could get rid of the actual orange background. That would look great on a t-shirt because now whatever the color of the t-shirt is, that would now become the background color. Okay, so here's an example now. I've got the orange all removed and yeah, I need to clean it up a tiny bit, but for the purposes of this video, you get the point. If I bought it on a, say, a pink t-shirt, for example, it would look radically different than the original poster. There's no more orange sitting in here, for example. You could even change the text in here. So there's an example of where you could create, you know, using old style artwork, you could create a t-shirt design based on anything because you could just add in the text down below. And that really speaks to the second way you can modify these images is to use them out of context. So I'm actually going to use a different example for that. So for the second example, I'm on WikiArt and I've actually clicked on the genres page and now I can see here there's a bunch of different sort of types of genres that I can click on and I'm going to click on animal painting. And I can see here there's a whole bunch of artists that come up and you might go, well, these aren't animals at all. These are human beings. So I'm going to click on a person here, this Breton Riviere, and I can see now down below there's the different artworks here. So here's one called Sympathy. I'm going to click on this one. Again, I'm going to double check that it's public domain. It is. I'm going to view all the sizes and I'm going to probably take the original one here. This is a nice high resolution picture or high resolution enough and I'm going to click Save Image As and that'll be the image that I use for print on demand. All right, so this second technique involves using a picture out of context. So the reason that somebody might buy this picture is because they like the original artist or they like the original style of artwork. However, I'm not going to be using that in this second technique. What I'm doing instead is I'm going to create instead maybe a sticker, you know, a round sticker, and I'm going to put some text underneath. It could be funny, it could be endearing, it could be a quote. And it's those sort of things that wind up driving the sale. Yes, it's old style artwork, but the actual artist is not being mentioned. The actual art is not being presented as is. Instead, it's being co-opted for some sort of funny meme or some sort of funny saying, or it doesn't have to be funny, but something that is out of context. All right, I really hope you found this video helpful. The site again is called wikiart.org. It's totally free. Check it out. Not every painting and artwork on here is public domain. So you want to make sure that when you're looking at these, this style of artwork, when you click on it, double check that you're using public domain art. Here's another video that will hopefully help you supercharge your print on demand journey. Thank you so much for watching.